This video is going to be about describing the function ggplot contained within the library ggplot2. So what we're going to do is talk about the basic structure of this function ggplot. Now, really what I'm doing here is trying a new pedagogical concept on you guys. What I've shown you so far is a bunch of examples of ggplot functions in action, like bar charts, histograms, density plots, box plots, violin plots. These are the ones I've shown you already. So what I've done is shown you very specific examples of ggplot. What I'm going to try to do in this video is show you a very general layout for the function ggplot. It's going to be so general that we're not even going to refer to a specific data set. We're going to refer to, in general, a data set. Whatever data set it might be, we're not going to say. We're just going to say there is a data set that theoretically ggplot refers to. And so here, we're good. here we go. We're going to build what looks like some code, but is in fact not real code. If you try to run it, you'll just get error messages and no plot will be displayed. But I'm thinking if I can show you the general instead of very specific, the general structure of what ggplot, the function, looks like and is doing, then we can start to develop a better understanding of how ggplot works as we see more specific examples. So really, my pedagogical strategy here is start you with specific, then give you very general, and then follow it up with some more specific examples. And the hope is, once you tie all of that together, you'll get a very good abstract understanding of how ggplot works. So here we go. The library, ggplot2, needs to be loaded before you can use the function ggplot. Now, all functions in R are followed by left and right parentheses. And inside the parentheses goes arguments. They are arguments to the function ggplot. The arguments are ways for you to say specifically what things should this function act on. And so what we've seen so far is that ggplot's first argument is a data frame. So I'm going to use capital letters anytime I'm referring to something very generally. So df, standing for data frame, is not a variable in my global environment. So there is no data frame yet refer named df. I'm just saying very generally, theoretically, a data frame, whatever it might be named, finches, tooth growth, plant growth, um, penguins, whatever the data frame might be named. Let's just call it for now capital DF to keep it very general. So ggplot's first argument is a data frame, whatever that data frame name might be. The second argument is the aesthetic call, which really says on which axes should we put the x and y variables. So within the data frame, there are some variables that you want to put on the x and y axes. And theoretically, you're going to put a variable on the x axis and then a variable on the y axis. Now, my data frame is fake. That's why it's in capital letters, as are my variable names contained within that data frame. So I'm just going to say capital X and capital Y to refer to the fake variables that live in the fake data frame, df. But so far, what this structure is showing you is that generally, the function ggplot starts like this. You pass in a data frame, and then you specify the aesthetic of the x and y variables on the x axis first, comma, and then the y axis. So this is the general structure for ggplot. And after that, what we do is literally add on layers of geometry. So what follows after that is geome underscore, and then a bunch of different types of geometries. Like we've seen box plot before. We've seen bar before. Many of these we won't look at, but you can see there is quite a number of options. I will show us some of these as the class progresses, but we're not going to be able to look at all of them. We just won't. So I'm going to refer generally to the type of geometry as type. I'm going to put it in all capital letters to remind you that you're supposed to fill something in there 
its name will not be type, its name will be box plot or bar or histogram or one of the specific geometries that maps the X and Y aesthetics to the appropriate axes as you see fit in your plot. Whoops. The geom underscore type is actually another function and that function has its own arguments that are specific to that type. So I'm going to say these are type args, type arguments that you'd fill in there. This is the very general structure of how the function ggplot works. And in fact, once we get fancier, we will start being able to add more geometries onto the same plot. So we will build up more advanced plots in the world of statistics by continually adding layers onto the same plot. And if we get enough layers on there that are meaningful, we should theoretically have very sophisticated plots. Now, if you've seen our book found in the syllabus, specifically the Modern Dive book, if you've made it to this as a reference yet for data visualization, chapter two, specifically the grammar of graphics section 2.1, what you'll see is this book explains to us the exact key parts of ggplot. And now this explanation is very general and even a little bit more abstract than what I just gave you with fake code inside our studio. But because it builds the explanation at a higher level of abstraction, you can see that it actually tells you more about the details of the aesthetic attributes. Like you can even specify color, shape, and size of the various different geometric objects that get printed onto the plot. And here are some of the examples of the geometry types. So please do go check this out. I'm hoping that once you start looking at some of their examples of histograms, and you better understand the general layout that I just gave you, you'll start to see that all ggplots start with a data frame. And then for histogram specifically, you only specify the x-axis variable, temperature, and you say you want the geometry of a histogram added onto the plot. I hope this video is starting to help you gain a more general understanding of the way ggplot works. And when you need more written words alongside it, please do check out um, chapter two, data visualization of our book, Modern Dive, listed in the syllabus.